In this video clip, I will show you two interesting ways to use the phage display technology. One of them is called in vivo phage display. In vivo means within the living, in Latin, therefore indicating the experimentation using a whole living organism. In contrast, in vitro means within the grass, indicating experimentation in a test tube under controlled environments. In vivo phage display was originally developed by the research team led by Dr. Aki Beoswadi in La Jolla in California. With this technology, a phage displayed a peptide library is prepared and administrated into the a mouse with a tumor. After allowing the phages to migrate inside the body, the tumor is removed. The phages are then extracted from the tumor for amplification. The amplified phage, uh, phages are administrated again into the second mouse with the same kind of tumor. After the phages were allowed to migrate inside the body, the tumor was extracted again to amplify the phages. So this process was repeated until the particular phages had accumulated in the tumor. At the end of the day, analysis of the phage DNA allows you to identify the tumor-specific peptide. In addition to tumor, the phages can also be extracted from different organs to find peptides that are organ-specific. For example, if you are interested in lung-specific peptides, you can extract phages from the lungs. But today, the many peptides are known to accumulate in different organs and malignant tumors. In theory, these peptides can be used to deliver the drugs to cancer or specific organs. It's a great, nice uh, you know, the example. Then the, I'll give you uh, another example. The other interesting methodology uh, using the phage display technology is mirror image phage display. Before I explain the technology, I would like to introduce one chemical term uh, called enantiomer. Some compounds have enantiomers or mirror image compounds. And an enantiomer is formed when four different groups bond to a carbon atom, which has four hands, if you remember. A compound and its enantiomer are related to each other in the same way as our left hand is to our right. Amino acid compounds also have enantiomers, like alanine. One form of alanine is called L-alanine, and the other is called D-alanine. Essentially, all the amino acids in our body, or most of the organisms, are in the L form. That's why the phage display can present a library of only L peptides on the surface of the phage. In contrast, chemical synthesis of peptides allows us to construct a library of D peptides, if you want. The combining the chemical synthesis and phage display technologies, Professor Peter Kim at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology at that time conceived a great idea. That is mirror image phase display. He thought that peptides consisting of non-natural D amino acids could be the good candidates for drug development because the peptides of natural L amino acids are easily broken down in the body, but peptides of D form amino acids are not. 
He realized that the opposite of the opposite form is the original form. They synthesized the SA3 domain, um, SA3 domain, a protein involved in calcium genesis that I mentioned earlier, the synthesizing proteins that consisted of D form amino acids rather than L form. He obtained the mirror image, mirror image uh, of the SAC domain. Here's the SAC domain, but D SA3 domain, which is unnatural. They used phage display method for the next step. That they prepared a library of L peptides on the surface of phage, because the phages can produce only natural peptides, L peptides. So here's L peptide. Among the peptides, they selected the phage that binds to the D form of S3 domain, they chemically synthesized. By analyzing the DNA of the phage, they identified the, the L peptides that bind to the D form of the SA3 domain. So if you look at this in the mirror, you see the D peptide that binds to the natural L form SA3 domain. Very smart idea. In this example, Professor Kim used the scamper category of reverse twice.